So is it Monaco, Monaco or Monte Carlo? However you pronounce the name of the place and whatever you might think of it, the new Maserati Ghibli S fits right in here. And so it needs to with a price tag just a whisker short of 74 grand. According to Maserati though, the revised Ghibli is 70% new overall, featuring all sorts of electronic trickery beneath its elegantly restyled skin to make it drive and perform better than ever before. And this includes a completely new electric power steering system. Mate this little lot to a more potent 424 bhp version of Maserati's twin turbo V6 and a 177 mile an hour top speed and well the car can't help justify its Monaco like price say Maserati's perfectly dressed sales and marketing chiefs. Question is are they telling the truth? Even just the name Maserati Ghibli has an awful lot going for it before you so much as mention anything about what the car's actually like to drive. To be quite honest, the first example of this, which came out in 2013, 14, wasn't that great because fundamentally it's, it's, a, it's a quattroporte underneath that's a little bit shorter, but not much lighter. It's about 50, 60 kilograms lighter than a quattroporte which ain't great, but this time they have done all these tweaks to it and they, they're sort of claiming that it's about 70% new, which that's some claim. For sure it looks better. Um, and I love the way that they've split the brand slightly between between the two Grands, Grand Sport and uh, Grand Lusso. That, that, that kind of works philosophically, I think. But the big thing, mechanically with the car is the new steering. It's got electric steering now, whereas it had a hydraulic system before. Obviously they've done that for emissions reasons, for economy reasons, but they are also claiming that they reckon this steering, the E-Pass steering in the Ghibli, has more feel and is just better than the old hydraulic system. It's are telling the truth it's it's kind of light it's really light in the way that a lot of Italian quick cars steering systems are Ferrari are the same you know it's kind of finger light like that but it's actually pretty accurate and you, you do have faith in where the front end is on this car so yeah I believe them I think it probably does steer better than the old Ghibli this one's the S which has got as much poke as you can get in a Ghibli 424 bhp it doesn't feel slow either okay the the problem with it is that it weighs over 1800 kilograms so even if you got 420 horsepower 580 newton meters of torque which is you know pretty decent from a three liter twin turbo v6 the performance is is good with a capital g but it's not great it's you know it's quick but it's not shatteringly rapid i mean that's absolutely everything in second and third gear and we're going downhill and okay going towards the horizon pretty briskly but it doesn't ever kind of remove your hair with its pure pace sounds quite good though gearbox is an eight speed zf with paddles press the manual button and it becomes fully manual even to the point where you can run it into the rev limiter and it's pretty good I mean it's not as kind of snappy as a proper dual clutch but it ain't bad in fact in many ways it's very good especially when you stick it in auto on the move the Ghibli S is impressive rather than mind-blowing but it does feature a number of new electronic safety features that have helped it gain a full five-star NCAT rating recently so even if it isn't quite on a par with the likes of the Mercedes E63 AMG in ultimate terms, no one can deny how safe or efficient it is. And in these respects, it does represent a big step forwards for Maserati. You could change the parameters of the skyhook suspension, the electronic dampers basically, the throttle map, the gear change, as you can in a lot of these cars nowadays. But the nice thing is that the steering actually stays exactly the same across all the modes. 
that shows how confident they are in the new steering. And the more I drive this thing, the nicer I think it does steer. I'm not sure about the way it rides. It never was the best riding car, the Ghibli, especially not next to an E-Class or a 5 Series, or even a Jaguar XF, and those, you know, those are the sorts of cars that we're talking about that it's in competition with. It definitely rides a bit better than it did before. It doesn't have this sort of clunky, almost non-controlled, poor body control that it had before. It's, it's, it's definitely better, but it ain't no E-Class. It does have a nice sporting edge to it though, the Ghibli. You know, it's it sounds good. It, it just feels a bit more, it feels a lot more exciting than something like an XF or or an E-Class. It feels very Italian. And I'm, I'm, I'm really quite warming to it actually, even though it's got quite a few flaws. So you've got loads of buttons down here. One for manual, one for sport, which changes all the map, the exhaust, etc. And then one for dampers, and you can have them all, you can adjust them all separately so that you can have, if for some reason you would want it, the stiff dampers, but without the sporting drive line, which I don't quite get that, but you know, you press the button and it does something, that's the main thing. And it does, you know, you press the dampers button and the body control definitely gets a bit crisper, a bit sharper. And the sport button really does release a nice noise from the engine. Mm. Maserati Ghibli has definitely got better, without question. Whether it's right up there with something like an E63, I don't know, maybe that's unfair to be comparing it with something like that, but you know, this thing costs a very thick end of 80,000 pounds. So it is an E63 rival, and I'm afraid when you start comparing it with cars like that, the logic starts to go slightly out the window. As ever, emotions play a very big role in the appeal of the Maserati Ghibli. I think in areas, it's not very good, but in a lot of ways, it's rather fabulous. And I'm really glad they still make cars like this that aren't absolutely to the regular template of the stuff that gets churned out by BMW and Mercedes and Jaguar, etc. This car is different and you have to love it for that. Click on the video windows to watch a first drive of the Maserati Levante or a track comparison between the Mercedes E63 S AMG and Porsche's Panamera Turbo. Click on the play icon to watch our latest video or on our logo to subscribe.